Imagine a car driving on the highway. It's running on gas. It needs to change into an electric car without stopping traffic. That's what Ethereum expects to accomplish with one of the most highly anticipated events in crypto, a major software upgrade known as the merge. After many years in the making, the Ethereum blockchain will shift to a proof-of-stake consensus mechanism, replacing its current, more energy-intensive proof-of-work model for authenticating crypto transactions. What's happening is that the way that blocks are made and added to the blockchain is changing. Right now with proof of work, um, miners are involved in that process. Um, and, and after the ad will move to proof of stake, it'll switch the role to validators. Ethereum has been the backbone for many of crypto's biggest innovations so far, like decentralized finance, non-fungible tokens, and decentralized autonomous organizations. So why is Ethereum making this transition? And what are its benefits and risks? There are three issues that the merge aims to address. We'll call it the three S's. It's sustainability, security, and um, scalability. One of the main criticisms of proof of work models like Bitcoin is its impact on the environment. This also makes ESG focused institutional investors nervous. Ethereum here is going to be reducing its carbon footprint by transitioning over to proof of stake. It's going to reduce the energy consumption by 99.5% compared to proof of work. The switch of proof of stake, you, you don't have to spend as much computational resources. You simply have some something at stake saying I'm behaving in an honest way rather than relying on this work mechanism. So. The cost, uh, to put it into scale, you may have needed an entire data center worth of hardware or several data centers worth of hardware to be able to produce blocks or you're joining a mining pool. Well, with proof of stake, you can be a block producer and a participant in, in the consensus of Ethereum with something as small as a, a laptop. This lower barrier to entry, Ethereum developers like Dan Loon argue, makes the network more secure. With proof of stake, basically, anyone can participate. So you only, you need 32 ETH and you need a validator to run this process. And so um, that in and of itself means that more, there's less barriers to entry in terms of being able to participate in staking process. So more people are able to participate on this network, making it more decentralized. However, others argue that the shift to proof of stake will lead to more centralization risks. Part of that is because of the 32 ETH minimum requirement which is currently worth about $50,000. For those who cannot make the threshold or choose not to lock up a significant amount of money, they can participate in a third-party managed staking pool. So there are right now four staking pools. It's Lido, Kraken, Coinbase, Binance, and they hold up to 55% of staked ETH in the Beacon chain. And so um, that shows that these four big conglomerates um, are really controlling more than the majority of staking your ETH in this process. The Beacon Chain is Ethereum's current proof-of-stake network. It was introduced in December 2020 as essentially a staging area for computers operating the Ethereum network to prepare for the upgrade. Currently, there are over 13.5 million ETH locked up on the Beacon Chain and over 400,000 active validators. This will eventually be the chain that merges with Ethereum's current proof-of-work network. And the Beacon Chain is going to continue on. And the Proof of work chain will be will be depreciated because it's going to be so hard to keep mining it that there won't be any incentive for miners to uh, continue to be on that network, and so they will just leave the network and go somewhere else. Circling back to the car analogy, as a user or someone who holds ether, imagine you are the passenger sitting inside a moving car. Your car will switch from gas to electric without you feeling a thing. Your, your ETH tokens won't be affected. Nothing. You you won't really feel a difference. It's just going to open new opportunities moving forward um, for Ethereum. And that new opportunity is scaling. Is It means that more transactions are going to be able to be processed faster on the Ethereum network. And as a result, um, like gas prices might come down because there'll be less congest congestion. And but that won't be an immediate result of the merge. That will be the next step, which is introducing um, measures such as sharding, basically a concept where um, it's going to break the blockchain into mini blockchains and therefore able to process more transactions. That's around the corner, but that's not happening right now. It's just that proof of stake will be able to set that up easier come 2023.